Welcome to this lecture series in Real Analysis. In this lecture, we'll discuss the cantor schroeder bernstein theorem, which is a fundamental theorem in set theory. It has nothing to do with real analysis. What does it say? It says that suppose we have two non-empty sets, A and B, and suppose that there is an injection from A to B, and there is an injection from B to A. Then, there is a bijection from A to B. It's a very, very fundamental and inter interesting theorem. So to show that two sets are in bijection, you d need not work very hard. Just construct an injection from A to B, construct an injection from B to A, and that's it. There exists, therefore there exists a bijection between A and B. And that makes life a lot more easier than it would be otherwise. Uh, an equivalent formulation of the, fun uh, of, the, of the theorem is in terms of surjections. So here we have two non-empty sets A and B, and if there is a surjection from A to B and a surjection from B to A, then also there is a bijection from A to B. Uh, going from one theorem to one version to the another is, is very simple because having a surjection from A to B implies that we have an injection from B to A and similarly for this direction. So the equivalence of these two statements is clear. And before we discuss the proof, uh, let's uh, talk about a small notation. So if there is an injection from A to B, we write this. So the theorem says that if this happens and that happens, which is same as saying that if there is an injection from A to B and an injection from B to A, there is a bijection from A to B. So when we write this, we mean that there is a bijection from A to B. So this, the symbol is read as cardinality. And if you put some set inside it, you say cardinality of A. And this theorem says that if cardinality of A is less than or equal to the cardinality of B, which we have defined what that means, it means that there is an injection from A to B. And if the converse also happens, then equality happens. So this is a very, very good notation. It is very easy to remember things in this notation. Remember that these are not numbers, but still we are, we are defining uh, a comparison between them. Okay, so we will not be discussing a very, very formal proof of it. In fact, I encourage that you skip the proof. In, for the first reading, the, uh, my recommendation would be to just skip the proof and take this theorem for granted. But if you insist on seeing a proof, uh, let, me, let me get there. So the proof that I like is due to Conway and Doyle. I will not be discussing it in full detail. We will be using graph theoretic terminology and uh, you can consult uh, the videos in the playlist Kickstart on graph theory. Those videos pertain to mainly finite graphs, but here we will be dealing with infinite graphs. Okay, uh, and I will hopefully not forget to put links to other proofs in the description. Since this proof will not be entirely detailed. I I feel obligated to give references to outside sources. Okay, so let's see what is the main ideas. What are the main ideas? So let's start with injections. F is an injection from A to B, G is an injection from B to A. And what we will do is we will define a bipartite graph on two sets. So the left side of the bipartite graph will be all the elements in A and the right side is all the elements in B. And let us now define how to join edges between a vertex in A and a vertex in B. So we join an edge between A and B if either FA is equal to B or logical or GB is equal to A. So this is how we draw the edges. Okay. So so yeah, now note that, note that every vertex in this graph, either from A or from B, has this constraint. The degree is at least one and it cannot be more than two. Why is that? Why a degree at least one? Because you pick a vertex, you pick a vertex from A, it is mapping to something and therefore it has to have some edge. 
all right and it cannot have more than two edges because if it has let's say more than two edges let's say it has three edges then one edge could be due to a mapping to something well it has one edge has to come from there but then the other two edges have to come from g mapping these two points to a but then g wouldn't be injective so no vertex can have more than two edges and two edges happen precisely when you have b mapping to a and a mapping to some i mean in this picture if suppose you have two edges then either it could be due to b mapping to a and a mapping to this guy or this guy mapping to a under g and a mapping to b under f okay and now there are three kinds of or maybe more than three kinds of so there are essentially three kinds of components in this graph you could have infinite paths infinite paths further can be of three kinds both way infinite or uh, one way infinite meaning it could be something like this or that or you could have finite paths or you could have cycles there are three kinds of components in this graph why is that because th this is because of this reason and this is very easy to see in finite graphs in fact in finite graphs you cannot have this this situation you can only have finite paths and cycles as components that is very easy to see but in but since our graph is potentially infinite in fact it could be uncountably infinite this extra case occurs which as we said further could have extra cases in it but in each of these components so if we had this component we can easily look at a bijection i mean from this portion to that portion we can construct a bijection because it could be something like that sorry so just map this to this this to this this to this this to this and this to that so that would be one way to get a bijection from this part to that part and similarly for cycles and you can also talk think about infinite paths so this part of the proof that i'm discussing is is a little bit sketchy uh, and i don't want to give too many details here but uh, basically this is the idea this is the main idea of this proof by conan and doyle conway and doyle okay but as i said i i encourage you to skip this skip the proof of this theorem for now not because this proof is too hard or anything it's just that um uh, it's my recommendation that it will make you learn things faster some things should be skipped and this is one of them okay so with that i want to end this lecture as usual like comment share subscribe and i will see you next time